Hey everybody, this is Chad. I'm here today with uh, Bob Bittner. You probably remember Bob from the incredible clownfish breeding videos. Um, puts out some of the, the greatest clownfish that there are. And also, Bob is what I consider rather famous for a product called Reef Stew. Reef Stew is, to me, the absolute best food for your reef that you can think of. Uh, your fish love it, your corals love it, and it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, today we're here with Bob for a different reason though. Bob, Bob has a, a new invention. Um, Bob, how you doing and why don't you tell us about that? I'm doing pretty good, Chad, and thanks for coming out today. So what is that? We call it the frag gripper. It's going to be the only frag glueless frag disc on the market right here. We use no glue, no rubber bands, and it has these bendable tabs which will hold an SPS, and even better, it even holds soft corals. So I've done fragging over the years a lot. I think anybody who's kept corals has because they grow and you want to be able to frag them. And for me, I hate fragging. It, it's, it's always a pain. You, you have rubber bands that can kill your coral. You have glue that sticks to your hands but doesn't stick to the coral. Um, you have to keep, you know, you have corals that slime up and the glue just doesn't work. It will not work on a soft coral. Right? So, so it's an absolute pain. So over the years with fragging, I, I know you've probably had a lot of experience with the kind of old-fashioned down and dirty um, method of, of fragging. What, you know, what experiences with fragging led you to feel that there was a need for this, this new invention? Well, first of all, working with glue. You have to make sure the glue still works. It's not all dried up. And the one time when I had to glue one frag where I didn't use any gloves, I ended up gluing my fingers together. <laughs> and by the time I found the acetone, which going through the garage to find it, it didn't even work. I and mean, then the fingers were already stuck. So that's one of the problems. So wait, what did you do if your fingers are stuck and the acetone doesn't work? Well, we had to carefully get a clean razor blade. At least <laughs> I was able to get a clean one on that. A new one never used. And we were careful and we cut the glue and didn't cut the finger. So you literally had to cut your fingers apart. I had to cut them apart. Pull, as much as I pulled on it, it was getting ugly. So I mentioned rubber bands. That's an alternative that people have used to glue. My experience with that is that the pressure of the rubber band kills the coral. What's something else you've tried besides rubber bands? Well, the rubber bands will cut through a coral. So what I tried doing for soft corals, where it's very difficult and time consuming, I would take a disc and I would drill it. I'd get a carbide bit, drill a hole, get a very skinny toothpick. You've got to have a real skinny one here. Glue it, let it sit, let it dry. Then you'd have to cut the coral shish kebab it on there, <laughs> to get a rubber band to keep the rubber band on the top so the coral doesn't slide out of it right here, wait about three weeks and hope that it adheres to the disc and then break off the stick which is showing on it. But the time consumption on that too is you still have three weeks and you only hope that it will hold. That's like so, a medieval torture device. Yeah, I've been stuck <laughs> with it too on that one over there. So we're trying to find a way where we can cut a coral frag a coral, attach it, and be able to sell it and let it grow. So fragging, as we've discussed, is a big pain in the butt. But you have to frag. Why is fragging so important to the hobby? The future is changing with coral. It's getting harder and harder to collect coral. A lot of places have closed down, so we can't get it. So now what we really have to do to keep the industry going is to grow our own coral. And in order to grow it, we need to frag it so we can just have future generations of the coral. And we need to make it easier. And with a product like this, we can actually cut a soft coral, attach it to this, and sell it right away instead of going through the long process of rubber banding it and hoping that it will stay on a disc. So you have a pain in the butt process that has to be done because the hobby won't survive without it. And so that was your motivation for coming up with, what are we calling, what are we calling your new? We're calling it the frag idea? gripper. Frag what gripper. it does, it actually holds on to the coral without using any glue whatsoever. It's a faster process and it works. So let's take a close up look. 
here's our medieval torture device. Get rid of that. And so this is, first off, it, 3D printed? Yes. So you've gone through the process of, of 3D printing these. Um, let me grab one here, too. Get it closer to the camera. So it has these great looking movable, movable arms. This, which flex as you put a coral in it. So they use tension. Tension, whatever, that you can put a frag inside here. Okay. Pull it right through, and then it holds, and then we have a disc. Okay. Plug. So you can put that in egg crate. You can do all the egg crate, any frag, you know, wrap. All your classic, you know, things that you want to do, or you could like sometimes what I do is I actually will I'll break this part off and just use the disc. Is that enough weight to to hold that down if I do that? As long as you don't go with something that's really tall because it'll leverage the okay. water movement, knocking it over and stuff. So it's a great a great one for green star polyps. Soft corals, we're doing green neptia with it, we're doing soft finger coral. We have some down here, even some of the green star polyp you can see on the disc right over here. And then there's some green neptia in the back, and in the upper corner, in the back part right there, we actually have some SPS growing with it. So I just want to get a closer look here at what uh, Bob was talking about, and, and you can see like that guy right there, yep. the, the little little black gripper is actually down in the sand, One's in the back, yeah. and then got some back back there, and then you said there's yeah there's some so you can't even tell bird's nest in the back corner and in the back of the tank right over there. So so like one of the things I like about this I'll just make a quick personal comment is it's black, and I, I really like the fact that that blends in. It's always been one of my pet peeves to stick a bright white you know plug. Now sometimes you have to do that. Um, but but for display purposes, it's so nice. Yeah, so coral line grows on it really good, too. You can see the one in the back there. So coral line is already growing on that. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And then, so even green star polyp, how do you put a green star polyp on that same way? Or is there that something was actually different? pretty easy because I have branching green star polyp right here. So I was able just to cut it off like an inch. And actually push it right in. It was a real simple process. And we've even had a big six, seven inch sea cucumber run over that and it stayed attached. Okay, so one of the things, Bob, that I'm curious about this because it's plastic, does it stay down? Sure. We got a lot of water movement here, but slowly watch it. Okay, so it sinks. This thing's heavy enough that it's just going to go to the bottom on its own. It's not going to bob up and take your corals with it. That's great. But you can see the flow right here, which is moving it around. Right. But if you have that uh, actual plug on it, that's not going to happen. No. And if you have the weight of a coral, it's not going to happen too. Correct. Okay. So I'm curious, um, Bob, what what kind of made you think of this idea? Where, Where did it come from in your brain? It's so difficult to find a way to get soft corals to hold on to a frag disc here. So my first thought was... Maybe we can 3D print something like Chinese handcuffs or something similar to that. So I got a piece of scrap paper right here, started coming up with different designs just from the junk mail <laughs> section right here. So it's like those great songs that were written on a napkin. Pretty much it was about as close to that, and I saved that from the very original right there. And some things can't be too easily 3D printed, so we tweaked the design a couple of times here, the size, um, how it does not hit one of the arms and we've actually tested it and it works. So less is more in this case. Fewer arms allows for it to bend and and grip better? Yes, because all these arms will clear the other arm. As this thing goes in, it won't hit the other one there. So you can go something pretty thick right here. I mean, well, it looks like I'm fragged. So <laughs> so pretty much any size frag that you're you're going to want to stick in there. Almost any. If you had something that was almost the size of this, you could easily take a pair of cutting pliers and nip part of that off. But I've put some pretty thick pieces in there already. So it's flexible. Yeah, it's flexible. You take that out, the arms come back. So it's definitely a workable product. has just enough tension on it there to hold it in place. If you did go with something smaller than that diameter, you'd have a problem. But we're going to be doing these in different sizes eventually. So to get to where you're at, it took 
months, I suppose, of, of research and trial and error and des redesigning and designing? We're coming up on a year almost right now. And we're also patent pending, so this we have the application already submitted on this, and that took a little while, too, between that, trying to find an economical way to make this work. And at this particular time, we're buying these and we're adding them to the kit, but there are different ways and, and I think that the patent's kind of important to, to mention. I'm glad you brought that up because at the beginning of the video, I, I called this an invention. And, and I, I want people to understand that it actually is an invention. This is something very unique to the hobby. I've been doing this for a very long time. I've done a lot of fragging myself, and I've faced all of those pains that you, you talked about, including gluing my own fingers together. Uh, and so when I saw this, I, I just I really did think that it was innovative. It's something new. My first thought... You know, I do marine a lot, but I've, I also do fresh. Um, and so one of my first thoughts when I saw this was, what a great way to keep plants in a planted tank into your substrate. So I, th I think there's applications for this invention beyond your fragging that, you, that people could keep their plants down. That's one of the biggest pains in a, in a freshwater planted tank. Um, and I know you're a salty guy, but for those plant folks listening, they're all nodding their head right now, knowing that every, wow. you know, We've got something we can work with. Right. Uh, there's, to me, this is great to put in a little bit of substrate. There's enough room in there to pack a little bit of fertilizer in with it so that your plants get a good start. I mean, root systems will, will grow. So I just see this as a, a multi-use product. And so that's why I call it an invention because it, it's, it's not just somebody who takes the same old product and redoes it because we've seen over the years your standard frag plug redone right someone will use maybe a different material or they'll put they'll glue a few color. rocks on it color and that's the same thing made a little nicer i want people to understand this is something different there's nothing like it on the market we look for anything out there that's glueless that will hold it and there is nothing available so this is really the first of its kind so to me that's exciting and it has a lot of uses in the hobby. Do you have an idea about when people will be able to get their hands on these? We're just refining the packaging on this right now. We have everything ready, but it should be within about a week or two. We'll actually be oh, that quick. Yes. Oh, wow, that's exciting. So I'm looking forward to get my hands on some for both my frags and for my plants. And so I, I'm, I'm hoping that uh, they take off because I can definitely see that there's a need in the hobby for, for this kind of uh, product. Well, Bob, I, I really appreciate you having me over and, and letting me in on, on this you know, little secret. You believe in this product so much that you've, you've taken kind of a drastic step. Yes, I have. Uh, my business is full-time breeding clownfish, and we actually sold all the clownfish or should I say, in another three weeks, all the clownfish will be gone. So as of June 15th, 2019, we have a local store that's buying all of our tanks so I can focus 100% on this. That is a, a definitely a vote of confidence for, for what you, you, know, you have created here. Will you be doing any anything else as far as, like, what, is reef stew going away? or No, we'll be doing the reef stew and the coral because all three of these work together. Okay. That makes sense. I, and I you know, I have to ask about reef stew because, you know, I love, I love reef stew, and I would be sad if that went away. Um, that there isn't really a replacement out there. Some people have tried, but I, I've... I've not found anything that works as well. So you'll be doing the full thing. You'll have the reef stew, which will help to feed the corals. Correct. And then the corals that you'll frag, put it on your own own plug, ship yes. it out, that kind of stuff. Okay. Well, I think that's absolutely incredible. I appreciate you letting me see it. Um, like I said, I can't wait to get my hands on, on some of them and try them out. Try them out with plants as well as corals because I, I think that there's multiple... Market. Yeah, it's multiple uses for, for these things, and, and I know it's hard for people to see in a, in a video, um, but once you actually, you know, pick one of these up and you start to, f to feel how it's, you know, put together, it's, it's quality, um, those little arms are so, they're strong and flexible. Strong. Yeah, so once you actually get one in your hand and you start just fiddling around with it, you start realizing just how useful it's, it's going to be. Right. So I, I really appreciate that, and please keep us up to date 
on on the progress. Um, we, we'd love to come back anytime and see some of the corals um, that you're going to do and, and just kind of go through that too. Um, so thank you very much, Bob. You have a really good day. Appreciate your time. Thanks, Chad.